Welcome to SelfDiscoveryWisdom.com, formerly known as Self Discovery Media. On these podcasts, you're going to hear people who speak from the heart. They've taken the journey in life. Many things have happened to them, but they've changed it to happening for them. And in their strength, their courage, they've discovered their abilities and their wisdom, and they are now sharing it here with you. Do enjoy each show. We bring it to you with love and knowing that it's going to help you on your journey of life. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Your Health is Your Choice, right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy. My wonderful guest joining me today is Christine Blatchett. She's going to say, run with it. Don't run against it, run with it. She has five ways to sticking to the program. Well, what is the program? She says, despite how much you enjoy working out on a regular basis, however, there are days that it's challenging to even tie the shoelaces. There are various reasons for not wanting to go for that run or for not having enough time or it's too cold. Well, she's here to help jumpstart into a positive mindset with an exercise regime. Here are her five steps. I'm going to be talking about those five steps today. She is an energetic, enthusiastic host and producer, turning her passion from running um, and everything fitness into a career. Her show, Run With It, is broadcasted monthly and airs daily on Novus TV, TELUS, um, Healthy Living Network, Optic TV, and her YouTube channel. Her other shows, Novus uh, TELUS TV, and the YouTube channel is The Closing Act, which provides profiles, musicians, and other movers and shakers in the entertainment industry. Both shows are now live streaming on Zonda TV network. And uh, health, she interviews health and fitness professionals and athletes and celebrities on anything from proper nutrition to training for marathons, uh, being the best expert in the industry to keep you informed and inspired. She is internationally published health and fitness lifestyle writer. She writes weekly columns in Quebec's largest English language newspaper, the Sherbrooke Record and Freelance for other notable publications. And she's a regular contributor on Livid Magazine, New York uh, and New York City, and has written stories for the Seattle Times, Vancouver Sun, um, Snowshoe Magazine, Canadian Running and Optic Magazine. And she isn't, when she isn't busy, what do you mean when she isn't busy? She's hosting and running instructor at the University of British Columbia. I mean, when she isn't busy. I'm tired out for reading your bio here, darling. (laughs) I think we're you know, run for it, yes, is what you promote, but really just go for it. You go for it, girl. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, what a wonderful introduction. And thank you so much for being a guest on your show. It's uh, really an honor to be here. It's um, when you are busy interviewing, it's nice to to have the shoe on the other foot for a change, right? (laughs) And uh, um, because it's all about you this time, which is important. Now, clearly, you have a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Not everybody's um, energy matches their enthusiasm or the skill set or the the mindset. You know, they want to be enthusiastic, but they don't know how to be because they think it's going to be too exhausting to be. And they don't realize it really is, you know, a mind, heart, soul, body connection in order to kind of get into that that energetic enthusiasm that will make you run for it Mm -hmm. it does i mean i think i think too it all comes down to what you love your passion like for myself running found me and it sounds kind of corny even to say that but it's like i left running when I was in high school, because um, to make this long story short, my brother needed points for his his track team and and they needed it. So with, as a point, you know, they'd be able to run more events. I'm not sure exactly, but anyway, <laughs> I ended up being on his team because he's my brother. What can I say? You right. know, <laughs> support the family, right? <laughs> yes. But yeah, I was getting hooked and then I remember running on the country roads with my brother in the winter. It was very cold. But that moment of running or any doing sports, I, I owe it so much because it's, it's turned mm. not into a passion for a cottage industry, if you will, but also my mindset. 
And, and going back to being enthusiastic, I think that what makes you enthusiastic is following mm-hmm. something that you really love. I mean, it doesn't have to be running. It could be yeah. gardening. It could be anything, anything that it may come out later, like it did with me with running because I love running and I came back to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I think is just do and you will discover. Yeah, I think we're so busy kind of searching for what it, you know, I do that. I do. No, just take a breath and experience something. Experience it because you never know what that experience is going to say to you. And you go, you know, I really, I really like this. And the more you do, I really love this. But if you're not willing to go through the experience or try something out, you don't know what you're capable of and you don't know how much you're going to love it or hate it, which may be the case, but you just got to get up and try. Yes, you do, because that's how you know if you're going to like it or not. And and I'm a firm believer. I'd rather fail at something, yeah. but at least I've tried. And I don't want to go back, you know, and say, oh, I wish I could have, would have went yeah. to, you know, I, I think life, it's not easy. I mean, mm-hmm. running is a wonderful, um, and not everybody likes running. I know I have friends, <laughs> colleagues, like, how can you run? <laughs> but it's like, again, it's that passion. It, it, you know what? I I have to say, walking. I thought, oh, why do I want to walk when I can run? But now mm. I love walking. I love power walking. I got that from my mom. And I and I also put it in my program. It's just, it's a different meditation, if yeah. you will. It's it's um, low impact. It, it's uh, time for you to don't know look around and see you know see the city see the town where if you're traveling I think it's a wonderful opportunity to walk through the tourist area or run like I do in times (laughs) but yeah it's just following that passion you never know what it'll be like it's just you could be with a friend Mm -hmm. you could be hey do you want to do some sculpting what uh well maybe I like to try cooking I never thought I love cooking now Mm -hmm. I find it meditative. I used to yes. run away from it. And my mom <laughs> said, I'm going to do the dishes and cook. No, I'd rather be outside with my brothers and dad bailing hay or whatever mm. than to be in the kitchen and making food. And I and I loved eating it. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But don't you find it's different stages of your life? I, I was thinking this last night, you know, got a I asked people three questions on Facebook the other day and I'm going to do a follow-up show on it you know um, on those three questions and so it was going through my mind last night until four o'clock in the morning you know what happens when that gets going right you can't shut it off and it's like I was, have always been a person of enthusiasm unfortunately my physicality due to asthma and other physical ailments has never matched the physical um prowess of it you know being able to keep up I I could do more when I was younger now I can't I can't run at all now but you know there's different ways of running there's uh, I've become a plodder as you say like the more the the walking um metaphor because with that I have realized that in the slowing down and the paying attention I see more I absorb more I experience more and in a way, I am actually sprinting through life because I am observing more mm-hmm. by slowing down. So when you're saying run for it, you know, run it, run for it. There are some people, literally it is the running, some people, the speed walking, the physicality, really good for the cardio, the brain, the everything else. But really, whatever, whatever makes you get up and go forward towards something is really the something that is your driving force, the passion and conviction. And you said failure. I don't believe in failure. I believe that if you try something and it didn't work, it was a lesson learned. All right. A failure is when you give up and do not try anymore. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. It's like, cause sometimes you think, well, sometimes you have to go through a bit of, mm-hmm. dare I say pain, or a little bit of the hard times to get where you're at. When people would say, oh, you're lucky, <laughs> lucky to do this, lucky to do it. No, it's called belief, being enthusiastic, and hard work. But smart Experiencing work, life. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I, I'm a one that um, I always try to put my positive thinking cap on every mm-hmm. day. And I'm human. And sometimes it's difficult, 
because it doesn't fit today. Yeah, because <laughs> there's sometimes that you just don't feel because mm-hmm. you know there's been a you know a unfortunately a death or a traumatic yeah. experience, and then you have to you know just figure out how you're going to navigate through it all. And when I do that, and I'm listening to my inner voice and and just trying to do what I can, because at the end of the day, as long as you try and, and do what you can, and it's about helping others too. I think, yeah. you know, I, I feel if you follow what you love to do, mm-hmm. you can help others better. Like really, it's, it's I agree. you're a better person. You're genuine. You know, people say, who do I interview? And I say, people who come from the heart. I have 18 Mm -hmm. different genres, so it doesn't matter what the topic is. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Is it coming from the heart? And are they doing it because they want to help others along the way? That's as simple as that. We step into that. We really, truly have stepped into our calling, our purpose, our commitment, our compassion, as well as the passion that gets us up every day. Mm-hmm. we need goals too right yeah. and and I feel good when I'm helping others mm-hmm. and I'd rather ask someone can you help me is there a thing I can do for you because if you don't ask sometimes you don't know and sometimes I feel I'm in a better space because I'm not afraid to ask if I need help I'm not afraid to say I can help you with this because sometimes you think well maybe that person doesn't want me to ask but then yes. I'm thinking, how will I word this? Because it just comes from another side, if you will. And I think it's through, I don't know. I, I just try to read people and, and yeah. just be, what would I want? If I right. was in that person's shoes, how would I feel? I try to be thoughtful, you know? Well, that's, um, that's, 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 you know, kind of, it's called being aware, mm. right? And when you care, you become more aware. Right. And, you know, what you would maybe want in that situation, maybe not what they want. Maybe sometimes they just want somebody to be present with them and not ask them anything or not try to heal anything. Just be there. Be that loving energy. Because very often, and you know, when you go through any struggle or strife, you don't need the words. You don't need the actions. All you just need is to catch a moment, to catch your breath, to catch your thoughts. Just... I need to to decompress and having somebody there that's just got you can be that permission, can be that space where you can do that safely. Yes. And I know I love that. It's so well said. It really is. I feel that that sometimes when you're going through, you don't want anyone to talk. (laughs) You you want, you want the, the, like if my mom was alive, I know in the past, she wouldn't even have to say a word. I know she was there. Mm-hmm. And that's just an example or a good mm-hmm. friend or, or someone, you know, something that's really happened recently. You feel like I can't deal with this yes. because sometimes you just can't. And not in just, the moment, not in the moment. No. You're too overwhelmed and you're not meant to deal with it in the moment. You know, you, you're going through the psyche process. It's not mm-hmm. for you to resolve it in this moment. It's just for you to deal with it in this moment where are you at. But yeah. I imagine this is where things like you're running or if other people, um, you know, I have an artist coming on soon, you know, her painting. and I've interviewed other people, they're singing and other people, their comedy, you know, whatever it is, your passion, your go to that sets you free. Because I imagine when you're in that kind of space, going for a run and just letting everything out can be so very healing for you even crying like I know (laughs) I know I'm thinking crying and running what does that have to do with it but it has you need wipers on your eyes as you run (laughs) (laughs) but it 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 just brings out like it just makes me think so much better Mm -hmm. it's a meditative movement I don't I I I feel free I don't try not to bring my phone with me because what's the point yes like I'm being not you know it's just to recharge my batteries but um i do sometimes though i confess but usually i will not do that and i don't suggest it because it's your time to i call it my play time my appointment yeah. with myself yes my appointment with myself yes and that's it helps so much 
And, you know, for, you know, when you find that something, a lot of people think that meditation is cross-legged and home. You know, I'll need a crane to get me back up. I'm, you know, if I'm down there, I'm locked in. I'm not getting back up. <laughs> but, you know, meditation is finding that space, that place that you can mm-hmm. go to. Is it a speed walk? Is it a run? Is it a walk in nature? Is it putting on the music and just singing or dancing or listening? Whatever takes you in and centers you and brings you that peace so you can start to see the clarity. That's really what meditation is, isn't it? Yes, it's just being, yes. And and like, you know, saying again, like it's whatever it is that mm. will help you not only get through the day, but to be a better person, to help others. You know, when you, if you can't help yourself, it's really difficult to help others. Yeah. And it's um, with mental health. I mean, it's, I know, um, what I try to do is is not only run, as I said, I walk, I try mm. just to, um, and even, you know, at my desk, like if I'm away from my desk, I'll, I'll just sit there and think about things and write things down and, mm. and, and it'd be so clear sometimes, but usually it's a run because after that, I feel, yes, I can do this. I can think how I'm going to problem solve. Yes. How I'm going to solve that problem. Yeah. It, because it becomes your clarity. And yes. a lot of it is that when you are focused in not something that that centers you, that clears you, we cannot resolve anything. We cannot have a creative idea when we're in tension. Yes. Because everything about us tightens up. And that means the oxygen, the chi, the everything in your body is closed off. So how can you have a clear thought on how to get out of a situation when you're in that form? So the deep breath, the running, the the meditating, whatever it is that you need to do, releases you. And in that release, then start coming the clarity, the answers that you're seeking. And you're not demanding. You're not going, where are they? Where are they? The past time, they should have been here at 10 o'clock. You know, it is allowing, allowing the body to release, the mind to release. And then all of a sudden, the answers start coming, don't they? Yes. And you, and not only that, you, you have more patience. Yeah. I, I think, you know, someone, someone's late. I just give them the benefit of the doubt. I think, okay, there's traffic. This is, I don't get like, oh, why? Like, as yes. you said, it just gives you, you're just more patient with others mm-hmm. because life happens. A better frame of mind. Yeah. You're, you're, you know, there's, there's patience. life beautiful mm. but it's at the same time can be really, really challenging and mm. and yeah so we try not I try not to look I always try to think what would that person feel like if I were in their shoes and mm-hmm. how I would try to deal with that and yes then, um yeah it's it and works. you know that we you know we I've got people that have particular ailments that are constantly reaching out to me and they're they're always playing the violin uh, and mm-hmm. I mean that in, in the way of, uh, 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 you know, they're, they're feeding the misery. And I'm a firm one is what you seed and what you water and what you nurture is what's going to grow. And if you've got weeds, you planted the wrong seeds. And every single one of us goes through struggle, goes through some agony. Some people go through suffering that no human should ever have to go through. But we have to make a choice somewhere along the line of, am I going to keep feeding the victimization? Am I going to keep feeding the pain? Or am I going to release myself from this so that I can see the possibilities that await me and the skills and the strength and the courage that I can have because of this experience? so good so well said again you know it really it's it's because sometimes you know I don't want to be the victim of this I Mm -hmm. have to do something about we have a choice to get up in the morning smiling really helps and I know when I'm walking doing a power walk someone smiles at me I smile back and I feel like it life is good It, it in kindness when we are kind to each other that is I, I think that makes makes it so much better. You know, I try to do that. Always be kind. Try not, you know. And it's effortless, isn't it? Yes. 
a it's smile, a, a good thing. morning, a how are you doing today? Oh, can I help you with that? Little yeah. things, they add up so big. And how how much energy does it take to do that? Yes. And and yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> it really helps. We want people to show us kindness and respect. So therefore we must be kindness and respect. You know, if we want people to show us love, we, we must be the love. Whatever we are wanting from other people, we've got to be it for ourselves. Absolutely. What you put out is what you receive generally. Yeah. It doesn't take long, whether it's sending an email or a text mm -hmm. or smiling back at someone that you don't even know. <laughs> and it, it just fulfills. Like, I know when I smile, I'm in a better mood. I feel like it's it's you know, it's, I don't, I, I just feel you, it's either that or look angry or be upset. And, yes. and I think sometimes we're, we're given things, you know, like I was watching a wonderful interview between Trevor Noah and Jay Shelty. And there's so much so that I actually had to do a, an in, a show on it myself and the impact that it had on me. But there was one thing they were re referring to is that, uh, you know, suffering almost is a choice because we all struggle. And suffering is, will, it's your choice to continue to suffer or decide not to suffer anymore and to strive through it. But we're going to have experiences in life that are unpleasant. We're going to have experiences in life that are going to be painful. Nobody wants to go through those experiences. And this thing, it makes us a better person. Yes, it does if we choose to. Um, but it doesn't mean that we enjoyed the experience getting there. We enjoy the results of that struggle on who we become. But the going through it is not necessarily something that we go, oh, a struggle, a strife, a pain. Let me embrace that. What am I going <laughs> to learn from it? It is like, oh, how am I going to get through this? And there we discover that resilience, right? And I think that again, it's like, I have days with my physical issues where it's like, how am I going to do this today? And then I remember how much I love what I do. And I click record or I click hello, my guest, and it changes my energy altogether. And I think that is something that we need to look for is what is it that's going to make us get up and run, get up and go, get up and follow that passion, no matter how bad you feel. Hmm. Absolutely, yes. And, and that is the key. Yeah. It, yes. Finding meaning in life, having the goal and the reason. Everybody needs a purpose. Yes. And, and if you don't have a purpose, you find one. Yes. Go back in your childhood. Go back, you know, join a club, do whatever you need. Volunteering is, is a wonderful mm. opportunity to meet people, but also feel good inside. And if you have time then do so or follow your passion like the running or golfing whatever you whatever it gardening. is yeah. flowers are beautiful like you know i notice we have flowers you feel so good like especially mother's day mm. you know i bought my mom flowers she's no longer here but the feeling i got from you know having flowers and flowers behind you it's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> My daughter bought me flowers on Mother's Day. Well, um, yeah. my son said, come over for Mother's Day, Mum." And then he said, by the way, you're working. He owns a restaurant. So there I am in 30 degrees, 32 <laughs> degrees heat, um, seating people for five hours, <laughs> like melting there. And then the next day, my daughter comes out and she had bought these flowers and they had started to wilt. So she put them in the freezer, <laughs> thinking that she's going to revive them. So when she bought them to me, she said, I'm sorry, mom, I thought I'd revive them. They, she looked like she'd taken them from someone's graveyard. <laughs> 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 they were just completely. <laughs> but, but, you know, it was the, again, the thought behind it, the gesture behind yeah. it. And then just have a good laugh, you know, yeah. because there's even beauty in, in the dead flowers, right? Because yeah. it's from the person that gave you them, the heart mm -hmm. in which they gave them. And, I, I think one of the things we don't pay enough attention to, and I'm sure, you know, as you said, when you talked about power walking, you're, you're slowing down and paying attention more to what's around you, where you're running. 
you're running through it. You may not be observing quite as much. But when we do see what is around us and when we could see what Mother Nature gives us, what this beautiful planet gives us, and when we could go to a park and go running through it and see the dogs chasing the stick and the children chasing the dog and, you know, chasing bubbles and the laughter and the joy of people having picnics and things like that. It's those beautiful, simple things that yeah. make life so just a, ah, oh, that is such a beautiful picture. It is. And, and, you know, I think too, it's like your attitude, right? Yeah. It's how you look at stuff. Like I had one person say, oh, you always look life through rose colored glasses. And then I said, <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. It means I choose to look at it in reality, but what's the best options here? How can we solve the problem? What can we get from it? What's the lessons? Yes. What we can do. It's better than playing, you know, being really upset. And then when you turn it around, better things come out your way. Maybe not what you wanted initially, but something bigger and better because you didn't plan on it. So, right. This is part of your program thing, isn't it? You know, your five ways to sticking to the program. And I'd like us to start going through those. You know, you you number one, have a mantra. Writing it down, saying it out, help clear, uh, you know, to conquer anything, no matter how you're feeling that day. And your mantra is, I have an appointment with myself. And it reminds you that uh, you need and want to take time out for you and running for you is your time out. So having that mantra, it's honoring your own space, isn't it? It is. For me to become the best I can be to help others. I feel everybody needs their own space. They need mm. time out. <laughs> yes. And it's called self-care. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's vital. Some people think, oh, you're selfish, but it's not being selfish. No. It's, it's self-love. Yes, absolutely. Self-love. And again, if you can't love yourself, how do you expect anyone else to love you? Right. Oh. So it's really, really important. Then you've got number two, getting your gear ready the night before um, helps keep you organized and accountable for that workout. And it helps you also choosing your favorite career to work out on on certain days. And it's a confidence booster to look and feel great. Plus, it's an opportunity to go for your closet and give a few things away. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true because... When I find myself, I prepare myself every day for what I need to do. I include running in my calendar. I have mm. it in my head. I have it mm. in my calendar. And 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 I just, I take it off when I when I do it because it's part of me. Mm -hmm. Everything, I, I write it down. I mean, I, you know, I don't write it down. I put it in my, you know, I type it in, you know, Google Calendar. Whatever you need uh, or have um, that works. It could be on your you know, your calendar, you can write it down on there instead. Something about handwriting it, like writing it down with a pen or a paper. I would suggest not a pencil, but a pen <laughs> and just write it down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I know that a lot of people speak to the hand to the paper yes. as a dyslectic. My voice came when the computer came mm -hmm. because um, I could correct things easier and uh, or auto correct correct things for me when I did things the wrong way. So actually, I became more immersed in that than the pen to paper. So you know, whatever turns you on, whatever makes you do it consistently, that's the important thing, right? So yeah, I think getting prepared. I do that myself. You know, when I know I've got two shows, I wear something different, and I always make sure that I do not wear the same outfit. Uh, in the next two weeks so when people are looking at YouTube they're not going to see the same outfit across the thing you know it differentiates uh, the shows um, so I think kind of being prepared and not kind of in the morning what am I going to wear it's there you can put it on you're ready to go so I, I agree with that and clearing your closet out I do that when I change wardrobes over and go I can't fit into this anymore why have I still got it here it's time to go <laughs> Um, then number three, visualize the goal and write it down. Don't get discouraged. If the goal changes because of injury, lifestyles change or work schedule, the key is to keep striving for the goal. And as you said, if the goal may change, it may evolve. It may pivot into some place where you're meant to go. It's not about, I've got to do it this way because that was the goal. What was the goal? 
The goal is for you to be happy at something that's going to make you want to get up every day and do it. So if the goal changes, that's okay, as long as there's still a goal that's going to get you up every day. Yes. You know, you may be a runner, um, you know, and then you think, oh, I don't like running because you can't run. You have knee problems. You have whatever, you know, just do something else. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, is like it's just so important to have something for yourself. You know, whatever it is, it'll make you want to get up, as you said, in the morning and, and feel feel good. I kind of write things down because they solidify. I've interviewed so many people, especially veterans. I used to be able to do this and now I can't. So I had to find something else I could do that I could be just as passionate about. Yes. And that's the point, isn't it? There's certain chapters in your life that come to an end. That doesn't mean it's the end of your book. It just means there's a new chapter waiting to be written. I love it. Love it. Yes. So number four, have fun with your workouts mix it up by going to the track or run on a pavement or a trail go to the gym choose an activity that you really enjoy that you will most likely stick to the regime very important if you're not having fun you ain't doing it right no it's like why do it yeah if it's going to be thinking you're going to be thinking about it all day and think oh i gotta do that run i gotta do that run and then all of a sudden it's like why am I doing this? Yes. I don't want to do this anymore. It's, it's you don't want it to be a duty. No. When you talk about regime, it, it's, it's a part of your lifestyle. It's not like, oh, God, I have to do this. It's a punishment. It's like, I want to do this because it makes me feel good. Yes. And, and yes. And that's the, the whole key really is, is it'll keep you going. Otherwise, you're going to have burnout. or it's going to just make you feel sad, you know? It's, and you're not going to commit to it if that's the case. You're going to make every excuse in the book not to do it. Procrastinate. Oh, like, boy. I'm, we're really good at that, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> As human beings, we're very good at that. Now, this one I absolutely love because I, I am speaking to it all the time. Don't compare yourself to others. Your fitness is your journey. And here is her quote, be who you are. There is no one else like you. 100%. When we, the two C's that I think are very, very detrimental is compete and compare. Now, competition, when we're in a competition, that's different. But if we're competing against someone because you want to beat them, not in a competition, but in life, or you compare yourself to other people, then you're denying who you are. So those two things are so detrimental to us. So I love the fact that you brought up, don't compare. Be your own unique self. Yes, because I used to be there. I mm -hmm. used to be there and I was in, I used to have a running coach. And I mean, it was great to be competitive, not competitive anymore. But when you're in that level, I felt like you're in a race, you got to compete, of course. Yes. But then I got to a point where, um, why am I racing every weekend? And why do I feel I need to compare myself? Yeah. I can't do that. It didn't give me a really good space. When mm. I found out I am Christine Blanchette, this is me. Mm. I will do my best. I'm not going to try to think that way because that's a wrong way of thinking. Yes. And it makes you, I don't know. It just makes you feel even, um, you don't want to try harder. Yeah, yeah. You just, you're not doing it for you. You're doing it for approval. And the yeah. moment you're seeking somebody else's approval, you've lost the reason for doing it. Yes. And and it it sets in. It's like, mm. yes, I think as you get older, hopefully wiser, right? You think, okay, I'm doing this for me. I've got a different chapter. I'm running for me. I'm not running for competition. I don't care if you're faster, slower. And I go into a race, Sarah, I'll go, if I medal, I medal. If I don't, I don't because did you enjoy that. the experience exactly yeah. and helping others yeah. along the way you know just that's my mission mm -hmm. I live with a it should be 90 in July um she still drives she cooks for herself oh. um she's stronger than I am 
and she had polio. She was a twin sister, her twin died, and then she got polio over four years in and out of hospital with operations and everything else. And her father was a devout Catholic, and she actually had her foot an inch shorter than the other, but she could walk with a brace, and that was good enough for her, wasn't good enough for her father. And he prayed at a particular church in Montreal for so long, or Quebec, and he told her on the seventh day, you're going to, your leg was going to be the same as your mother and I, and you're going to walk. And she thought, I'm going to let my dad down. He's going to be so upset. And the seventh day, he took the brace off. He put her on the floor and said, walk. And her foot was the same level as the other one. And she became a sprinter in life. And in many, many ways, she's still a sprinter in life. Literally just the other day, she ran after a dog three blocks to rescue a dog that had got oh. away from its owner. But she sprinted through life where she's got this competitive nature, the need to win. She's very, very alpha. And I think my purpose of being here was having her slow down to be the plodder and look at life from a different point of view because she was always looking for that approval. Look, I won, I won, looking for the approval from her mother who never saw her run except for once. And, you know, and it's so sad for someone who to reach that age and still be looking for the approval of somebody that's long gone, right? I, I don't do it as well as my mother or well, my mother wouldn't like that. And it's like, your mother's long gone, you're nearly 90. And it's so sad to see that because her life has been living by other people's measurement and expectation and not an embracement of her own worth. And I think she's a good example of how we could all end up if we don't take ownership of our own selves. Yes, that's beautiful what you said. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, when people, I would just say, I don't need, I know I tell my husband, I don't need people's approval. I don't need people's approval. And then, then if you are, then if you keep approving or whatever, it feels like they don't care. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah, really it feels fake. Like, <laughs> right? yeah. It feels fake, not you're, genuine. Yes. You're doing all that. And, you know, sometimes people may not like it because you left you know, being a competitive athlete or, or, or uh, you mm -hmm. know, a well-established author, whatever. But we go through these hurdles or these yeah. through these chapters and you have to say, no, I, I, I don't want to do that chapter. I want to go into a new chapter because it's waiting for me to write my own. And, and Precisely. And, and your own will be then the, become the inspiration for someone else. You know, I'm asked all the time, what kind of people do I interview? And as I said, heart, intention, really wanting to help other people. But people who've experienced life and have become because of that journey, because you truly understand, you know, you've that self-discovery of who you are, why you are and what you're here to do can be a rough one, can be an extraordinary one, but it's an ever evolving one. And to embrace like where you're at now, because of the journey that you've had before. It isn't about, oh, I've arrived and now I say status quo. No, you've made a discovery. This is the passion. This is the conviction. This is what I want to do. I want to run for it. You know, I want to keep on running and help people keep on running in their life. But you're going to evolve and keep on evolving to the day you die. Because that's what life is meant to be about. The constant learning, the constant growing, and the constant becoming and you know you go deeper and deeper what tree would you be if you were a tree oh that's barbara walters question. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't realize that actually <laughs> I love it. you know what i think a cedar right why because i think they're strong i think they're resilient and also this may sound when I was a little girl, and I did tell you, instead of going into the kitchen and helping my mom mm -hmm. make pies and do dishes, I went to the woods with my dad and my two brothers. But what happened, it was a cedar tree who fell, it fell on my back. And I conquered it because I'm here today. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, it wasn't that big. It was big enough. But um, and you're but small enough for it to have an impact. Yes. So when you ask me that, 
I think of the cedar tree. Yeah. And also there's a book I'm reading called Cedar Too. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> all right and we, that's another thing when those things keep coming up they, they're giving you a message you know for me a willow tree you know oh. I've I, I am air I'm an air sign air and water and so I don't like to be contained or, or rooted but okay. I've learned to become rooted in the earth as a willow tree my trunk has grown thick with age um, but my branches can blow in the wind any which way in any which situation without breaking and so that is uh, something that oh. I've become and that my ashes will be buried under. So. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. But with the cedar, I mean, I guess I'm describing it the best I can. You know, yeah. Like... No, but th that's the thing is that um, when we ask those kind of questions, especially when we don't know, it, it is that first thing that comes to mind. And the fact that the cedar flattened you, but now you could be at peace and in love with the cedar, is that you didn't look at it as the enemy. Yeah. You look at it as... The, the discovery of your resilience. Yes. And it was a gift to you, not an attack on you. Yeah, it's, I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it froze a few people, but, um, but yeah, I think this is the thing, isn't it? it? It's the more that you're willing to experience in life and the more you're willing to stop being headliners you know what i've noticed for so many people the headliners they read the headlines and then they assume they know the story and or the context of the story because they've read the headline or the headline has been run like if it's fox news they take a pimple and make it into a volcanic eruption so that headline is going to be catastrophic you know where somebody else may read it and it means something else completely and i think the slowing down and paying attention to the content, willing to read, willing to learn, willing to immerse ourselves into that journey. You know, as you said now, the power walking instead of the running, it gives you something different, right? The cooking that you used to avoid has become meditative for you. And when we slow down and we start allowing ourselves to go into something we weren't ready when we were young because we were in that discovery and chasing everything as we get the gift of age we realize it is the small things and the simple things of life that give us the most in life yes being gratitude being grateful mm. Mm. every day i wake up not always when i go to bed bedtime but in the mornings i i'm i'm so grateful and i'll just for the small things and the things to come. And it just makes me feel so full and so at home with self. Good. Yes, yes. I feel I'm at home. I feel yeah. it's it's wonderful. And I and I think too that well what we're talking, I'm thinking, you know, people pleasers. Like mm. I you mm. can't not expect everyone to like you. Right. <laughs> but what you can do is be love yourself and be civilized i think i think that too yeah. is just it, it's you can't because there's just some people like some people don't like me maybe i don't know and i know it's <laughs> but, it, but that's know you know but so, that's their business as long as they're not rude to you right exactly. that's them you know it's we're not everybody's cup of tea you know for me it's, it's people's strong cup of black coffee not tea you know it's yeah, the thing is I've, I've had this with podcasting your podcast should be this your podcast should be that you should be like so and so you should be like that and I said no they're taken they're like that I'm like Sarah I'm Sarah I'm going to do it Sarah's way if it's not your style I won't be offended I'm here for the people that are on that hear my frequency or hear our frequency my guests and I and they want to listen they want to learn they want to immerse themselves in the show because of the, all the beautiful nuggets that they're going to get out of it but if you allow other people to tell you you should 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 then you're going to lose who you are 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 and the way you're meant to do things right and so please that's again is that stop comparing you're not them no. You may have similarities or, you know, there's some things that you have, you are similar to, or you have tendencies like, or whatever. That's fine. It could be complimentary, but always be yourself because we've worked damn hard to be ourselves, haven't we? 
Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, be who you are. There's no one like you. We are exactly. our own brands. Yes. And I, and I feel we meet people for a reason. And we just, because if I'm somebody else, how can I be me to help others? Because maybe someone along the way that's just waiting. And that would be the perfect opportunity if I am who I am, right? To help. And I, and I think... I think it goes with age and wisdom, yes. but at the end of the day, did I did I do well for, mm. for helping others and myself to move through this this exciting journey we're on, but also challenging? And and it's our attitude. It's how we're going to, you know, not through rose colored glasses, as somebody said to me. Right. But I'm. I think of it. But I, not, I think. I think. You know. Let's take the rose colored glasses. They think it's an avoidance. Right? I don't think rose-colored glasses are avoidance. I think it's that we choose to see the color of life. And sometimes it's rosy. <laughs> yes, I love it. And and yeah, I mean, it's just well said. I well said. I I just feel the positiveness, the toxic, because you can handle toxic relationships better or anything that's coming. Or avoid them. Or avoid them and run. <laughs> Run. Yes, run, 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 run. This is when you get your feet going, girl. <laughs> Boom. But, you know, our fingertips, you know, when uh, fingerprints define who we are, when nobody has the same fingerprints, the same with our energy signature. It's the same as a fingerprint. This is why there are so many energetic healers out there that can do remote healing, because once they've got your frequency, it's unique and they can channel right to it right? Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it. So you're going to get people in life and whom you're meant to serve in life are the people that understand your frequency, that want to be in that vibe. So you're building vibe tribes, right? And the people that are going to come to you for that vibe. And if they're not a fit for that vibe, they'll go and find someone else. There's plenty of other people out there doing something similar. Go and find the person that you connect with with frequency. You don't need everybody out there as a customer. You want the people that get the vibe. Yes, absolutely. And if you're not authentic to who you are and the commitment to the passion and the conviction of who you are, then you're sending out the wrong signal. Yes. Yes, definitely. And that's so true. <laughs> yeah. mm. You know, um, you touched on the, you, your show, you know, you talk to nutritionists and things like this. And, you know, we've talked about running and being yourself and being freedom. But really, we do have to treat ourselves with medical doesn't. Medical compartmentalizes. They deal with this organ or that organ or this or that. They don't treat the whole. And one of the things we have to do, mind, body, heart, soul and spirit, is treat ourselves as a whole being. And it, only when we're in tuned with ourselves as a whole being are we going to know what we need to fortify ourselves. Definitely. I find that if you are like running is that mind and body connection and that fulfills me, but also listening. I think your intuition will guide you. I know when I listen to my intuition, mm -hmm. it's it it's it won't let it's you down. Rare. It doesn't. But when no. I don't, I'm thinking, ah, I don't know why. In your head. I yes. <laughs> I remember at the paper, um, the editors, I said to her, I said, I'm not sure if I want to do this. And I remember just paraphrasing, just listen. It may not make sense to you. But when you listen to your intuition, that's where I'll never forget that. Yeah. It's it's perfect. Then I feel, yes. ah, I listened to it. Yes. <laughs> we, we, you know, we're, we're taught especially probably in the last 150 years, education came into being and it's all academic and it's all in the head and they've disconnected the heart, soul and spirit connection, the heart, soul and spirit's intellect for which for hundreds of thousands of years we've lived by. We were in tune with the earth. We were in tune with each other. We were in tune with the weather. You know, we were engaged with it. So then we listened more to it and we weren't so governed by the head. Then education came in and it became the dominance. And the, what it's done in many, many ways is cut people off from the neck down. And they wonder why the information doesn't make sense or it keeps turning over and over in a cycle because you haven't given it to your heart and your spirit's intellect to make sense out of it. Uh, yeah. 
And it's, we have to bring in the engagement of the whole body, mind, heart, and soul to understand. For me, it's feel the knowledge. Don't think it. Feel it to think it. Because when you feel it, that means it's gone for the heart, it's gone for the soul, it's gone for the spirit. Now the mind knows what it needs to know when it needs to know it. Yes. And for me too, it's like, well, I mean, I cross-reference everything. Mm -hmm. I don't believe everything I read, hear, mm -hmm. see, watch. So I think just like the headlines, drop, okay, what's what's in here? Then I'll think, then I'll be thinking my emotional intelligence. What does it mean exactly? What is yeah. my, that feeling? And then, then if, then it's actually, it, it's, it's bang on because right. I'm going, I'm trusting it. Yes. I'm not trusting my mind. I'm trusting the heart. I'm trusting the whole process of who, of what, uh, you know, whatever the message is trying to say to me when we're watching news, which, you know, I, I, I don't watch a lot of news. I, I choose. And then yes. when I do have it forced in front of me, I'll look and I'll cross reference. But that, right. that's, I've always been that way. I, I don't believe everything. And well, I mean, let's, let's face it. Nowadays, it's about sensationalism. Mm -hmm. And they sensationalize the news. And, you know, um, there was a wonderful TV show um, in 2010 called Newsroom. I think it's still on Netflix. Oh. I highly recommend and anybody okay. watching. Have you seen it? And it's really a, that transition of good reporters reporting what really is happening, going down into the depths of it, but then um, advertisers and other people coming in dictating what should be said. And it's that transition into that. It's so well written and it's so well acted um, and really was kind of, I look at it and I think, you know, there is that last generation where people looked at what it was and they looked at the different, and they were not emotional, not impartial, but the way they delivered it made you these are the facts. These are the real facts. It's not fake news. It's not manipulated news. Because now when we look at it, we go, is it real? Can I believe it? Yes. You know, can intelligence. we believe anything anymore? Artificial intelligence. Uh, you know, a picture takes a thousand words. Now that can be manipulated. Look at what Putin's doing with the Ukraine. He completely manipulated his people into what they were fighting for. Right. And so I think this is where our, our heart and soul intellect the intuition has to be turned up because we have to deduce, is that so? Because if we buy into everything that's given to us, it becomes toxic to our own well-being before oh, we even know definitely, it. Definitely, definitely. And you don't feel, you have a feeling of overwhelmness. Yeah. You feel depressed. You yes. feel like. Hopeless. Hopeless. Yes. So. It's that's why it's so important to have your own goals. Yeah. Be positive, choose what you want to watch or hear and, but be aware, you know, and, mm. and, 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 and have that thinking. outlet, right? Have that yeah. thing, whether it's running, whether it's walking, whether it's whatever it is, have that something that, that sustains you, that releases you, that centers you. And that brings you back to clarity because if you lose that, and then you're flapping in the wind. Yes. And you and then you can't help others. You can't no. even help yourself. No. You know, it's no. uh yes. It's you know, let's talk about help because I feel that there's been such a huge emphasis in the last twenty years on self help. A lot of it was because there wasn't any information out there. So people had to take the journey. You know, when I was doing this, um, there wasn't much going on of that about self-discovery and there's certainly you know podcasting is the one that's opened that up wonderfully mm -hmm. and where people have really truly spoken about their journey what they did and then very often they've taken what they did into the workforce you know into their own work and you know it's now become a career uh, but the emphasis was on that self-help now mm -hmm. we're actually saying to people you don't have to do it alone we are here for you. And again, it's that vibe. When you listen to someone, you go, I like the vibe. I feel I could talk to this person. I feel this person can help me in this chapter of my life. And the willingness to ask for help. Yes, it's out there. I yeah. think people, generally speaking, there's more messaging out there around mm. it. Um, you know, 
ask for help. Mm. And, and I think I love it because you see it on social media. You see when, when you know, you got the help, the self-help groups, you have it on podcasting, you mm. have it, you know, you, I feel that is so overdue. It yes. Is, and with the pandemic, um, that was, I, yeah, it was the, the catalyst <laughs> to ask for help. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So I love it. You know, there's that it's becoming more, um, not a trend, Mm. if you will, but just more mainstream Mm -hmm. um, for because there is help out there and more that you might not even know. And now with men's health, yes, men are becoming, generally speaking, more um, asking and and looking for help and resources and, um, you know, women, you know, it's just everything that you can think of you know google right you know yes. you just have to go on facebook or podcasts or so many as you said yeah my brother-in-law uh, son-in-law rather you know it's a uh, um, hey google <laughs> and it's uh, it, it's hilarious because it's hey google for everything whereas we didn't have that you know no. we didn't have that we had to kind of work it out for ourselves or go and get a book or, or talk to people and all of that right and it's like we have to be careful too of the hey Google that we take it as an absolute. Take it as a door opener and then investigate further. Yes. Right. That's important. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Like, and that's what I do. If I see something like, you know, even a like it could be anything. Like I'll cross-reference it and I'll think, okay, if it's medical, like, oh, does that really make sense? I'll check it again. And you know, it, it's, it really is bringing it out in the open and making sure you are being educated, but yeah. yes, no, no. Um, yeah. It's always good to check cross. check. We're oversaturated, you yes. know, going from nothing to oversaturation and we do not have to discern what is really the truth. This is one of the reasons I do these shows because we're talking to people like yourself who live it, who've gone through it, who, who have discovered what works and now in that you know is now wanting to share that with other people so it can help them as a navigational school tool through their life and I think this is the reason why I do this because uh, yes you can google this that etc the diagnosis or whatever but when it comes to it listen to somebody that's taken that journey that's had the same experience or similar who is really genuinely there wanting to help you because they have not only the compassion, but they have the understanding of where you're at and they can help you. You've got to walk it, but they can help you by guiding you, giving you the tools and the skills and being the cheerleader while you walk it. So this is why it's so essential for people like yourself to come out and share how important it is to find that passion, to have that, that goal, that commitment, how important it is to nurture yourself and be abundant in yourself because then your cup can run up over. Yes. It's like if you, I mean, it's starting a running program, a walking mm-hmm. program. There are so many programs out there. It's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. That's why it's good to do your homework, cross-reference everything, check with clubs, check with clinics, and in your age too. Yes. You have to think, where's this running program? Is it for me? Is that how old am I? Ask questions. What physicality at level are you at? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. see a doctor before you start a program mm-hmm. you know um if you're if you're launching a podcast like your podcast you may love it but it has to sustain you yeah. right it's like finding out what works and having that clarity sometimes you go through when I started the show run with it it was a running show mm-hmm. and then now clarity has set in because it's more than a running show it's a, a stronger legs mm-hmm. but, but it has fitness entertainment mm-hmm. so as you go along you will see what works for you I always say now going back to the running clinic if they join my running clinic I'll see you know one lady was saying well I'm just trying running I said that's great you made the first step if you don't like running it's okay. You yes. may want to go into walking, but it's really important that you investigate and find out what works for you. You don't know until you try. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And you know, as I love your podcast is, you know, um, about running, but then, you know, it, it touches on 
um, underlining health issues before you just get up at the couch and say, I'm going to run a marathon. You know, it doesn't work that way. You've got to build it up. There's no. the nutritional level, the sleep level, the, the stretching level, the, you know, the whole muscle defining level. There's so many things that you need to do to prepare for that marathon. And, yeah. you know, that's the same principle for life. There's so much that we need to do to prepare to live this life and have a good long, you know, regenerative life. But we have to do the things that are going to sustain us, that are going to fortify us and not just, you know, oh, I'm going to do this. And you're not doing what you need to do for the body, the mind or the heart and the soul to fortify it, to do what you want to do. Yes. And, and you know, for me, um, I believe I'm a lifelong runner mm -hmm. because and now I'm, you know, I'm in Clint, I'm an instructor. I, I write about it. I have a show. But it's not me with the show. It's the experts. Yes. They are the mess. I'm the messenger. I have the reason for having this show. And the experts come on. They share their experiences. But it's it's all about what they, the viewers and the listeners, what they want to take away. Right. I'm giving the information. Yes. Whatever, you like, put it out there. What they get from it is up to them. It's out of our hands, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's I mean, look, you know, here's my 90-year-old and she's still running. Right. Not, not, you know, major, major. She can still run. When she walks, she is, could be miles ahead of me. You know, my niece and my daughter are like that. They, you know, could keep up with her. But, and she's not really done anything, quote, training, physical. I just, <laughs> she's a sugar addict, and a salt addict. And, <laughs> you know, like there is nothing healthy that she eats. I just think it's the old yeah. genes, you know. But, you know, you want to be able to able to run what at whatever level at 90 and if you want to do that the mindset has to be there and the body has to be prepared yes to sustain it's more, itself at that age mm -hmm. exactly it's more than putting one foot in front of the other right and it's more than oh i want to create a show well how do you create a show yeah There's a lot of background behind the scenes that mm. as you know and it's it takes that that methodical thinking about the passion and and finding out all you need support it all comes yeah. down you know i someone says oh you ran you ran a great marathon yes but it took time it took yeah. support training training yeah. and and that's how i got there it's exactly yeah people see you know the you know, the, the breaking through the ribbon, but they don't, and it's like, you know, overnight sensation. No, it took them 10 years to be an overnight <laughs> sensation, you know, and it's, this is the thing is that we've all got our due diligence, our paying our dues. And then there is that moment where we're suddenly seen, right? But that, you know, don't rest on those laurels because there's somebody else to see <laughs> the next moment. That moment is yours. You yeah. know, when somebody sees you or, or congratulates, that moment is yours. You know you've done it. And if other people have seen that you've done it, that's great. But it's not what you do it for. No, I absolutely, I do it for me and for mm. others, you know, to to get something from it, to become, you know, a healthier runner or to start running or to think about maybe creating something else. Like I, I'm just trying to do what I'm my purpose is and that's, when I follow that, I feel really good. And the whole thing that keeps me going is my running, my appointment with myself. Yes. And and there's sometimes you just don't have time to run or work mm. out. So what I do, I'll do the stairs, I'll do something psychologically. Yeah. And that helps too. So, you know, sometimes people may listening or watching and thinking, well, I don't have time to run. I don't have time to work out. There's 24 hours in a day. Yeah. Just manage your time better. Yeah. Yes. yes. Put it in like, I'm going to brush my teeth or I'm going to have breakfast and I'm going to run at this time or I'm going to do this at that time, right? It's just manage your time better. I like when you think about running or walking, really what you need is a really good pair of running or walking shoes and a bottle yes. of water yes. and maybe the right pants so you don't chafe. <laughs> you <know? laughs> or gasoline or whatever. Yes. Is, you know, the most important equipment, as you said, is your shoes. Mm -hmm. Get fitted. So you wouldn't want to wear court shoes like basketball for running. Right. Of course. Find a shoe that fits you. Don't go for the color. Don't go for the yeah. brand. Don't go for the cost. A shoe will find 
its way to your feet. Yes. And I, what I mean by that, I used to be that, oh, I want this pink shoe. I want this most. No, it's what feels good. New, new balance could be has a wide as a a wide toes called a B, a B size. I can't explain, but mm -hmm. B width rather. Now, whatever shoe that fits. And for me, I go, I choose, I go between different shoes mm -hmm. because my feet swell, or if I want to do a trail runner and I'm thinking, oh, this, this shoe fits. And over the years you learn to adjust, but, and always have another pair of shoes, like, you know, a walking shoe, get fitted properly. Um, and I think that's the key and wear proper clothing, like dress for the weather conditions, shorts, you know, if you wear shorts, make sure you, you know, you don't, you know, blister. Right, Chase, because you, know, you can do that. Yeah. Little thighs like to rub together. <laughs> that happened to me when I first started running. So these things you you learn as you well. Hopefully, and of course the water and the water maybe with something in it, right? That uh, yes. that replaces um, you know nutrients in your body that you're sweating out. So that's important. Yeah. So, but when you compare it to other sports, you know it's it's a very economical activity to do oh, you go anywhere like you right. can put your running shoes in the trunk or in the car yeah. or you in transit and away you go bring plenty of water as you said electrolytes He's, yes um have that wear a hat i wear a hat all the time every you know whether it's sunny cold because it protects my head so it keeps the heat in but also but i imagine a, also with your coloring that the sun looks at you and goes zap yeah, my my, yeah, my grandson and fun. my son in law are that <laughs> <laughs> immediately. You're the same coloring. <laughs> I love the sun, but it doesn't like me. No. I know I, I'm like yeah. a lobster, so I'll wear sunscreen. Mm. You brought the mm. good point up sunscreen. Wear sunscreen. I wear it all year round. Hat carries, you know, takes the rain off if it's raining. Um, socks. I'm a, yeah. I love my socks. Yeah. Wear proper socks. Avoid cotton. If Wear mm. it when you're finished, you know. Um, because you want moisture wicking fabrics, right? right too. And, and the I same, know you know, like you can get these shirts too that are wonderful that absorb the moisture, so you're not sweating yes. and it's weighing you down. So, all right, yeah, you can invest in these type of things. Um, you know, initially you may say, "I'm going to just do fast walking." Now I'm going to be a runner. You know, now I've got to really invest. The shoes are the most important, but I'm now going to invest in these other things because it's something I'm taking seriously. It's something I need to do every day. And, you know, as far as the sunscreen, I don't care what skin tone you're in. You need to protect the skin from the rays because they're getting stronger. And, you know, you, you it, just a good sunscreen on your face, neck and shoulders, et cetera, are really, really important if that's the only place that you put it, right? So it, whether you're fair or not, it's a skin protector, especially when you're out there with those elements. An overcast day, you can still get you know, a uh, UV ray. So, um, but, but again, still compared to, you know, soccer or lacrosse or, or you know, um, motorcycling or this or that, many other sports that you can do that could be very expensive. Um, it is one that you, as you said, I mean, how many people say, I'm going to, uh, we've got Deb Drummond, who, um, if anybody hasn't listened to her shows, Deb, Deborah Drummond, just uh, here, you can find her on the site. She is going to be doing, eight marathons in nine days across Ireland to raise awareness for musicians. Yes. And, you know, and it's just like kudos to her. You know, I'll be in the car driving. No, I won't be, but, you know, that's where <laughs> I would be. But, you know, it's that let's do it. And then, okay, now we've got to train for it. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's yeah, putting in motion and just and making sure you know, it all comes to eating healthy and yeah. and also to Balance. cross training is yes. important too. I think I used to run, 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 run. There has to be, I mean, I did follow the hard and easy principle, but you need the cross training where the walking is, the um, going up a hill is good for your core, mm. doing some hills, uh, you know, weights, anything that will get you a to enhance your performance, we make you a stronger runner. Your core is your is your motor, right? And you have yes. to have that. So your breath too. Um, you know, um, yeah. I'm an asthmatic, and I remember seeing somebody uh, who was checking out my lungs, and he said, "You know, I'm, f I'm fine on flat surfaces, but the moment I have to go upstairs or hills or anything like that, it becomes uh, troublesome." And he said, "Don't breathe in when you're doing that. Breathe out as you're going up, like small breaths in, 
bigger breaths out. And so this is another thing, you're breathing. You've got to be, when you're running, you've got to be in sync with your breathing. But when you are doing those mountains or anything else, it's a different type of breathing technique, isn't it? Yes. And just don't think positive when you're going up the hill. Like, right. you know, this, it's it's a mountain. I've got, you it's, know, And sometimes you have to walk these mountains depending mm -hmm. on how steep it is. But you want to, you know, pump your arms. You want to be able to just lean into the hill and pick a hill if you're doing hill repeats that is the proper hill. It's not too long and it's not too short. But I, I do think... Build it up. I, yeah, I used to hate hills. Now mm -hmm. hills are my friend. Mm -hmm. It's my friend, I should say, is my friends because that way I feel I'm getting my core in and I'm, you know, I'm getting the strength. But weights, you know, is really good if you have five pound weights. You'll find Which you can problem. just attach to yeah. things, right? Yeah. 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 And that's the thing, you don't you're not gonna start off that way. You know, you're going to start off of maybe you start off with speed walking. Right. And and then from there you go, you know, I'm I'm ready for the run. All right, but where are you going to run? You know, maybe running on concrete pavement is not the place. Maybe go off to a park or a field or, or somewhere that you can run in that softer surface. Build yourself up. You know, I think this is something when we're young, we get enthusiastic. I'm going to do it. And we don't prepare. We just go and do it. And then <laughs> you know, as we get older, we realize I need to pace myself and build this up slowly and do it properly so that I can sustain it because we have more patience and we have more understanding of what you need. So I think, you know, whenever you're going to decide to do something, whatever it's going to be, you know, what, what do you need that you're going to get out and do it and be able to build on it and build on it? And if you're building on it and you're achieving, then you fall in love with it. And then it becomes something that you want to do all the time. But if you rush out and do it and do it wrong, then it's going to be, oh, I failed at it. And, you know, and then you're on to chasing something else. Yes. And be careful of biting off more than you can. Change. Yeah. I think you really have to visualize it and figure out, okay, I'm going to do this marathon. Whatever marathon it is, say it's in the fall and now it's May. You're right. Do I have time to train for this marathon? Yeah. What's my fitness level like? What program I'm going to follow? How do I want to do? Do I want to participate? Do I want to train? Do I have six weeks of training? What program? It goes on. Mm. It's it's being realistic with yourself because I remember running Calgary. I ran a Calgary marathon. It was okay, but I ran in the heat. Oh. And I'm not a heat runner and I felt really sick. So yes. Learning from that experience, I'm thinking, okay, I'm not a heat runner, but I, but I have to get climatized for it. It all depends on what you're training for. This is my, my advice and, and you know, what I've gone through and I'm sharing it. Yeah. But yeah, just. And that means really coming important. back to <laughs> listening to your body, listening to yes. yourself. It's not just about the head saying, do it, do it, do it. You know, and the body going, no. I'm hurting. You don't want to hurt. Yes, things are going to initially hurt a bit as you're breaking in the muscles, as you're breaking everything in. But if you do it slowly and methodically, then that hurt is going to become pleasure. Um, but if you do it just from the mind saying do it and you're not preparing for it, you could really damage something. So, it, you, you know, hurt yes. Yeah. And not only that, if you're, I've been in relay races and, you know, we had um, water stations, we had, you know, mm -hmm. we got sick, there was, uh, well, the massage, physiotherapist had everybody. Yes. So you have to plan on that, what you're going to be eating along the route, mm -hmm. what suits you. Like, I know when I test drive, I said, it's the class test drive, don't eat a banana, then do a workout, wait two hours. And even that may not agree with you. So I know yogurt. Mm -hmm. work well with me so I will not have yogurt no matter what before a running race or a trail or training um you know just doing a trail run or whatever um so I know listening to your body so it's a really good idea to test drive the foods you're yes. eating right now find out there's uh health making sure you're covered see a doctor see because you may say oh I ran 10 marathons but I want to start up again Hey, you may not be in that level right now. Right. You know, so you it's it's imperative. And maybe some people say, well, I'm over the top, perhaps, but I'm really big on seeing a doctor. If you're injured coming into the clinic, you have to tell me because we have to assess it. Yeah, exactly. If not, I don't want to take that responsibility of having someone get 
re-injured or injured, but get worse, I should say. So, you know, I know here in British Columbia, we have over a million people without a doctor, and so it's harder. But there are an awful lot of, you know, sports therapists that have their own practices. You know, they are, are really good sometimes probably even better than a doctor of assessing how much you can do and how much you can work at and nice. building you up. So, you know, if, if if the medical thing isn't there, then there are the other people that are there, you know, that can help people through it like yourself. And it's, you want to try something, you want to find that something, you know, that, that liberates you because that's what we're wanting. We want it then that liberation becomes our meditation becomes our clarity so, you know, you don't know what that's going to be until you try various modalities of what it is. And if running is for you, if you have something, you've always loved running, but you really haven't taken it seriously. You know, like, can I do a marathon? I don't know. I'm always running here and running there and I love running, but could I do a marathon? What does it entail? Then, you know, this is when yes. they can reach out to you. What does it entail? What do I need to do? Or like my little Audrey here, my 90 year old, she would, she tried marathons that were never good for because she's a sprinter. She never lost. She always came in first. She's a sprinter. Out of the gate, boom, short bursts of energy. That's it, right? So, you know, what kind of runner are you? You don't know until you've kind of experienced it. And so this is the thing. If it's something you feel, I, yeah, I really would, I'm really interested in this, but I don't know what the next steps are. What do I need to do to be prepared? And this is where they can come to you, where you can guide them on. Okay, you want to run? Why do you want to run? What is it about it? Do you just want to try it out? This is what you need to do. Yes. And, you know, I may not have the answer, but I'll get you the answer. Yes. You know, I don't pretend I know everything, but I'll get you the answer or the, another person that can help you. Another thing to I remember saying to my coach at the time, oh, um, I just started running again because I had a love hit. You know, I gave up, I yeah. came back to it. And, I want to run the Vancouver Marathon. <laughs> my coach said, that's kind of early, don't you think? But I knew in my heart that I wanted to do it, and plus my background. So my coach put together a program for me. For me. It wasn't like, you know, some shoe fits all right. program. Well, cookie cutter, you know, yeah. Mm. Yeah, cookie cutter. Like So, so that's a key. So mm. if you can find someone that, like a coach or a physiotherapist as, or both yeah. that know you and they can put something together because, you know, a personal trainer is great as well. Um, but find someone who can run too. Like yes. I think that's my opinion, you know, because they understand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're Good going, advice. you know, if you're a runner, you don't go to your martial artist, you know, they're trained in the, in that art. So you want to go to somebody that is the runner. Because you fully understand what that marathon means, what that running is, what, what that fast walking is. So you want to go to somebody who that is their expertise, that is their passion, because now they can truly speak to you what you need. You don't go to someone else who's in a totally different field because they don't know. And as you said, with all the interviews that you do, you're interviewing those experts. So if you per se don't know, you know somebody that knows. Yes. Yes, and it's it's wonderful to have mm. that, you know, uh, having me as a resource and I can figure out or they can listen to the, the show, the podcast or whatever. But yes, and I'll be, I'll be, you know, be honest. I'll say, yes, this, I don't think this is doable. Yeah. But go somewhere else and see, because I'm not, you know, if I find someone that is in the clinic and they're struggling and they're injured, I, I rather not have them yeah. or they're not following the homework. So it's easy to say I'm going to run a 10 K, but putting it into practice. Yes. It's easy to say, I'm going to launch my show. Mm -hmm. You have to put into practice marathoning or ultra marathoning, whatever you're doing. Um, what, yeah, what I, do I, you I, need? Yeah. You know, in yes, order to do it when yeah. you're running, what do you need in order that you're going to honor your body while you run? You know, uh, what do you need if you're going to start your own show or podcast? What do you need? A lot of people just dive into it, do it live. And they don't, you know, they just don't honor the people that they're interviewing because, you know, it's everybody in the cat is doing it now. Right. So <laughs> if you if you are serious about something and you're serious about the information getting out, uh, and wanting people to do it properly so that they don't get hurt and they do fall in love with it, then A, you've got to assess the commitment of that person. 
are you really in it for the long haul? Because it is a step by step by step before you run. Yes. And I'll tell them my, I remember my husband running the marathon and I remember saying it, the marathon is a beast. Mm -hmm. Respect the beast. Yes. Because, and I don't know, out in marathons, we'll be watching this, listening to this. It is, um, like I don't do any more marathoning now because I'm in a different chapter. But if I were to go back to do a marathon, Sarah, I would look at my physical and yes. think, do I have time? Do I, am I physically fit? Where do I need to go? What do I, what steps, how long it's going to take? Mm. Because I, when I raced in Korea, I ran a 10 K in the heat. I ran well, but I felt, and it's my fault because I ended up doing a 200 meter, um, track race I came in second to last but because I ran a 10k that day but I got heat exhaustion yes I was doing it for the wrong reason right. so running just respect it yeah. respect anything else like if I can tell anyone just seek out the people that can help you because it's that's what I call it a beast <laughs> you know yeah. that's just yeah. Well, I mean, you see professional, you know, you see when you're seeing particular marathons and things like this, and you'll see a professional that this is their art and they come across that finish line and boom, they're down. They make it look easy. They make, yeah, they make it look easy, but then you see them go down into a puddle and then you go, oh, that must have been hard because yeah. suddenly <laughs> they've been doing this and I'm boom. <laughs> so, yes. you know, and the, the as you said, the physiotherapy that you need, all of the professional um, athletes out there have physiotherapists, have massage therapists, have nutritionists, have everything because that is optimizing their investment as to whatever sport this person, this person cannot go and do what they do on the field or whatever else they're doing, tennis players or anybody, unless they have the right backup. So if you are going to do that marathon, if you are going to do it for a reason, make sure you do have a good massage therapist. You are on the right nutrition. You do have somebody that's coaching you properly that you know, knows when to pull you back or when to push you forward. Don't just go and do it on your own and then you collapse and you go wonder why. Yes. Or if you're an older adult, like yeah. I'm older now. Um so if I were to do that, I would, you know, as I said, I would look at everything and, mm. and figure it out. What can I do this? How well do I want to do? If I want to do an under three hour marathon, that's going to take a lot of work. Do I want to do anything? It's just, it's, it's being married. What's the cost? It. What's the what cost the of it? Cost? Financially, yes. physically, emotionally, what's the cost? Right. And is it worth it? Right. Yeah. And yeah, so that's, that's, you know, um what I do and that's what I would suggest you know if I may and then you, you've pivoted your passion like you're no longer the big runner anymore you run for you but the with what you're doing with your shows and what you're doing with helping other people you're running with their passion helping them find their passion yeah. their conviction so this is the thing in life I met somebody the other day who had been a hunter who had been a sports person and then um I don't know if he blew out his knee or his back, uh, but he was he was, had a walking cane. And he just stopped us as we're walking because we commented on his dog. And then he just went into a complete spiel, which I know this is what happens to me. People just download it. Right? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, and he went complete spiel of, you know, how he felt like his life was over and how miserable he was and everything because he couldn't do those things anymore. And I said, but that was an end of a chapter. The same enthusiasm that you did those things, try doing it in something else. Oh no, man, the last, the last. And you know, this is what we have to look at when we can't do the things. Like I simply can't. I can't even get down on the floor with my grandchildren. I have a condition, and my legs have just gone wherever they've gone, and they're just not with me anymore. And I have to accept that. I can't force it. I can't push it. I have to learn to live within the parameters of it. But that doesn't stop me from living and pursuing other things that don't require my legs. And I think this is the, the thing we have to understand. You can't do what you used to do. But that same passion and enthusiasm that you had there, you can go and put into something else and have equal joy of it and equal sharing that abundance out with others. And you're paying it forward. You're embracing yeah. it. 
Yeah. And, and it feels good. No, it's perfect. What you, <laughs> it's a perfect example. It's up to us. Again, you know, this show is called Your Health is Your Choice. We don't have a choice sometimes of what happens to us, but we do have a choice of how we look at it and what we do with it. You know, some people get cancer. Is it your doomsday and signed your death sentence? Or is it your discovery of your resilience and your tenacity and you're going to beat it? Uh, and that comes into that attitude, that conviction, that whole different relook at life and how you're going to get through it. In my case, I have something that is with me for life. I have to learn to manage it and partner with it. Sometimes its voice is bigger than me and I have to give in to it because otherwise I'm going to pay a higher price. Other times it lets me support me doing what I need to do, but I know we have an agreement at the end of that, I have to take that time out to heal. And so it's learning to manage it. The moment you resent something or you hate something or you feel victimized by something, whether it's a person or an illness or anything else, you have trapped yourself and you haven't got an ability to go and do anything else. So sometimes we just have to look at things as an end of chapter and open up a new page and allow the pen to write. Love it. <laughs> just love it. So how can people get hold of you and what way can you help them? And also where can they find all of your shows? Well, I'm not going to say Google it. <laughs> 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 you can find me. You can find me. <laughs> well, I have a, a website. It's runwithit.ca where you'll find both shows. Um, and then my social media handles are pretty well. They're there, I believe. But it's it's Christine. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and I will say Google my name. You'll yes. find. <laughs> you know, I have to thanks to Google. Um, but yes, that's where you can get a hold of me. Um, and and it's called Run With It, you know, my cup. And, yeah. and it's dot .ca, not dot .com, folks. Yeah. Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you've got your products and your service here, um, you know, and everything that you do there, um, you know, books and, and TV shows and the TV cup. And, uh, you know, that's the thing is when you listen, when you listen to other people, when you, I mean, I'm sure, you know, you're the same when you listen to those experts and what they bring to the table, you know, and it, it just becomes uh, just an, an enhancement, yes. you know, of the passion, an enhancement of that collective knowledge. No one person, not even Google, has to know it all, right? It, <laughs> is, it is each person's passion, conviction, and purpose. And when we put those together like an orchestra, and each person in their strength is willing to play together harmoniously, then we have a symphony that resonates out. So by bringing all of those experts together, creating that orchestra, you're creating that music that uplifts and shows people the way. Definitely. That's, yeah, well said. <laughs> so it's easy to find your shows. Of course, you're on YouTube and um and they find them when you go to, I'm just looking here at your site right now, you're on the magazine, you've got the magazine, TV show, host, producer, run with it show. It's all there. Um, and of course, your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everything is there. Um, and, you know, that's if you're interested in the running of the walking of the. I used to do it and haven't done it in a long time. How, what do I need to do to get back into it? You know, it's listen to the shows, but reach out to you. And yes. they, they can reach out to you either through your site, but they can also reach out to you. Um, hang on, I'm going back to your page here. Um, you can reach out to it to Christine Blanchett. That's B L A N C H E T T E at hotmail.com. And of course, you're on Instagram, Christine Blanchett TV, Twitter, Christine Runs. Uh, uh, Facebook, Christine Blanchett, and uh, LinkedIn, Christine Blanchett. So you're reachable everywhere, which is good. But I really want people to listen to your shows, watch your TV, read the magazine, because if they've sparked an interest of like, I really like to run or I'd like to speed walk or I'd like to get out there and do something physical, uh, you know, start with listening, listening to your shows and listen to 
what it entails and what you need and then reach out to you because then you know how to guide them that it's they've invested some time in listening and from that they can know yes I really want to do this or no it's not for me yes and they'll find out and they'll be happy to help exactly uh you know I've run a lot in my life, but uh, life, but not with legs. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 whatever your passion mm. is, it'll it'll be great because you're you're being authentic. And you're right. For me, it used to be dance. The oh. dance was what was where my freedom was, and and now, of course, for me, music. And although I can't physically dance anymore, I dance in my head. Uh, yeah. So Ian, and it's um, yeah. And actually, it has been scientifically proven that when you actually do something in your head, it actually raises your energy level and your dolphins and everything else. So, you know, um, thinking it, that means negative or good, you're actually making it happen. So it's important to do that. But running, I think, for, for many people, you see them do it all the time. They say, I just could not live without it. It is my freedom. And that's the thing. We've all got something that centers us, that brings us home to self, that relaxes us and then brings up that clarity of what we need to know when we need to know it. We've just got to find out what it is. And maybe it is walking briskly with a bunch of friends all the time. You know, that's mm. also really good. Or maybe it's running or maybe, you know, you want to try that marathon and you've never known if you could do it, what do you need to do? You're wanting to face the challenge. You just don't know until you're willing to try. But what do you need to know in order to try it? That's the important yeah. thing. Yes. Thank you. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I know we were both going to wear pink. I've got pink in this and I've got pink lipstick. I couldn't find my pink top uh, somewhere. <laughs> I live in a small space and the clothes are just all over the place. So, um, But, you know, we're... We're in the pink with our attitude in life, right? It's about yes. the love of life. It's about what what gets you up in the morning, what what centers your day, what drives you forward. You know, where is that meaningful purpose? Whom does it serve? Because we're all here as contributors with our beautiful divine purpose. And you literally run with it, literally. I so enjoyed you know, being a guest on your show. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for being here. And I am not the runner, but for so many people out there, they really do enjoy it or they want to, and they just don't know. But whether it is the physical running or you're running for something else in life, it is, there's always the prep. There's always the the why you want to do it. Whom does it serve? How does it make you feel? What do you need to do to prepare for it so that you can do it well? And if it is for ego or for glory or for attention or someone's approval, you ain't doing it right. But when you're doing it for you, because it ignites your heart, it sets your spirit free, it lifts up your soul wisdom, and now you become that abundance for everyone else, now you're on the right track. Thanks so much for being here, Christine. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Until next time, folks, you never know. So just go run for it and try it out. See you next time. Bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. There are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. Just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show.